advanced tire. So this is statistics lesson five, the first of our inferential statistics. I'm going to start off with, um, well, a nice easy one, to be honest. Um, as I've said before, personally, I think that each of the, statistics, the statistical tests is as challenging as the next to, uh, to do the maths of. The mathematics is fairly straightforward. Um, it is the theoretical understanding that is actually the really challenging bit and I'll try to uh, help you as much as possible with that in this lesson. This is for nearest neighbour analysis. All right. Let's imagine a map with settlements on it. Um, and imagine we're trying to describe the distribution of those settlements. Are they clustered together? Are they spread out? Are they spread evenly? Or are there concentrations of them? One way we can measure patterns on, uh, like this is by using neighbor, near neighbor, nearest neighbour analysis. What we're aiming to do here is to identify if there is a tendency for data that is spatially arranged on a map, so dots on a map, whether they tend to be clustered or dispersed from one another. You can do this with anything that you can measure by placing it using a dot on a map. Areas of woodland, areas of settlement, industry, you could do post offices, you could compare two different industry types. Recently I've seen someone compare the concentrations of Costa versus Starbucks uh, coffee outlets in a city and to see if there were any patterns that we could see between how those two different competing businesses are located. This statistical test allows us to make comparisons more than anything else uh, between two different regions. As such, it is a little bit like a descriptive statistic, but it falls under the inferential statistic heading. Um, so how do we do this test? Well, here's the first mathematical equation that you are going to be working with. Rn is the nearest neighbour index. So it, we're looking for an answer that is Rn equals. That's what we're looking for. That's the score we're looking for. And then there's some other letters, which you can see I've given you a key to. We need to know the area of the, uh, the size of the area that we're studying. So you would easily do that. You would calculate the area on the map that you are studying. You would need to know the number of points that you're studying. You must have a minimum of 30 for the sums to work. And D is the average distance between each point to its nearest neighbour. This box on the right hand side here, uh, this gives you a little um, sub lesson in how I've come to this number. Um, so what we do to calculate this number is we take uh, the sum, remember the little sigma symbol means the sum of, add them all up. So we take all of the distances that we measure, we add them together and then divide by the number of dots on the map. That gives us the capital D. So you do two times that number and then the square root of the total number of dots divided by the area. Now I've gone through that incredibly quickly. What you should do is if you feel you want to use nearest neighbour formula, review this lesson, speak to your teacher, and um, figuring out where the numbers go in these sums is never difficult. The actual maths really isn't that challenging. So let's talk it through. The Rn number that you're going to produce basically tells us if the pattern of, say, settlements on a map is clustered together, whether it's random or whether it's regular. A clustered pattern would be that all the dots are close to the same point. 
and this would have a value of zero. The closer you get to zero, the more clustered all of the things you are measuring must be. It stands to reason then that a, a score of a perfect zero would be very rare because if you had a score of a perfect zero then all of your dots would have to be very very closely packed to the same point on the map and that's very unlikely to happen. Random. If you get a score that is a perfect one or very close to one, so 0.9 would be very close to one, then you can say that the distribution of settlements is random, uh, i.e. there is no pattern at all. A couple of points to make here. I used the word tendency before. Where we get a score like 0 0.8, that means the pattern is tending towards randomness. The closer you get to 1, the more random you can say the pattern is. The closer you are to 0, the more clustered you can say the pattern is, and the closer towards 2.15 the score is, then we know that the settlements or whatever it is we're measuring are perfectly regular and equidistant. Clearly, again, it's very unlikely you're going to get a score of 2.15 because what is what what would you be measuring on a map that is perfectly uniform in its pattern, with each point being equidistant from its neighbour, equal distance from its neighbour? Um, it's unlikely you're going to get a 1.0 perfectly as well, because it, it, it's likely that there are some factors that are causing settlements to form little groups or little clusters. Um, but a perfect zero is also highly unlikely because the settlements are not all likely to be completely clustered around the same point. Okay, so how to undertake a nearest neighbour analysis? The area of study must have a minimum of 30 points. If you've not got 30 settlements, 30 shops, 30 plant species, 30 trees, 30 whatever it is you're counting, then you can't do the sum. You must have 30. You should measure the straight line distance using a ruler between each point and its nearest neighbour. So what this would look like is if you have a map which has, um, let's take a new example, uh, farms on it and a uh, farm is marked with the symbol FM, then you could draw a dot on all of the FMs on the map. It does not matter which farm you start with. Um, just make sure that you, you don't double count them. And you measure the distance between that farm and its nearest neighbour, and you write it down. You then go to the next dot and mark and uh, write down the distance between it and its nearest neighbour. It is possible for two dots to be each other's nearest neighbour, i.e. two dots have got each other as their nearest neighbour, that's absolutely fine. You just move on then to the next dot and measure its nearest neighbour. Do that for every data point that you draw on the map. You then total all of the distances measured above. That's what that little equation bit there means. Sigma means add them up. So you add up all the distances and then you divide by the number of dots, which is hopefully a minimum of 30. That gives you the capital D that you see in the formula. Calculate the total area of your study. Um, I think it's important to mention that the distances should be in the same unit of measurement as the area. So if you're measuring distances in metres, then the total area would have to be calculated in metres as well and then fit your calculations into the formula. How do we then measure our score? Well, using the RN number that you get at the end of doing the sum, I'm actually going to flick back up to that for a second. Here's the sum. So I've just been through how to calculate this number. You do two times that number. And then that's multiplied by the square root of the number of points, the 
number of data sets uh, divided by the area. That's it. Um, and once you've done that sum, you will have a number. That number will be um, will fit into this scale of 0 to 2.15. And then you use uh, this. Now, we do not have a critical value table for nearest neighbour. That's another good reason to do the statistical test first. This, this test has its own kind of critical value um, system, and that's what you're looking at in front of you. Let's say we have 30 data points. So we go along the bottom of the graph until we get to 30. If you had 60 data points, you would, of course, go along to 60. 30 is the minimum that you need to be statistically robust. Then you look at your RN value that you got from doing your sum. Let's say that you got a score of uh, zero. Well, we would know that you are right at the end of the scale that leads to a significant element of clustering. If you are th at 30 data points and a score of zero, then you are as clustered as you can be. All of your farms or settlements or whatever it is you're counting must be all clustered around each other at one point on the map. The further your score leads you towards the shaded area, the less significant the clustering becomes. As soon as your value lies um, within the shaded area, you know that there must be some form of random pattern. And again, the closer towards 1.0 you get, then the, the more random it must be. And out the other side, if we get a score that lies anywhere from here towards 2.15, then we know there must be an increasing level of regularity towards the uh, distribution. So, so anything that was laid out in a perfectly measured grid would be quite uh, regular in its layout. Okay. I think that's about as much as I need to do to explain nearest neighbour to you. What you need to do is to sit down with a map Choose something to count. Make sure it's something which has got plenty of data points, so you've definitely got 30. Measure the distance from each of those points to its nearest neighbour and write that down in a table. Then, follow the procedure I've described above and you will end up with a score. And that score will tell you whether the pattern is clustered, random, or regular. Once you've done that, you're in a perfect position then to use geographical factors to explain your findings. Um, for example, uh, if the coffee shops that we measured were very, very regular, it's likely because the gridiron street pattern of a city means that those coffee shops have all located on the corners of blocks of the city, and therefore they're very regularly spaced. Perhaps also that regularity would be because they want to distance each other to the maximum degree possible from their competitors. Um, if you were very significantly clustered, it might be because there was some kind of nodal point, some kind of point in the landscape that all of those businesses wanted to be close to, maybe a train station or some other kind of transport hub. And therefore, of course, they want to be close to that location because they'll have lots of uh, customers coming by. Um, being able to look at a map and simply with your eyes observe that there is some kind of obvious pattern in how uh, farms are distributed or cities are distributed or um, uh, crimes are distributed or almost any data set that you care to plot on a map, that's useful. But being able to statistically test it so you can say with certainty that the pattern you're looking at is clustered or regular or somewhere in between on that scale, that's really valuable. 
because it means that your observation is no longer a subjective one and it becomes more robust and reliable and therefore more objective. And that's the value of nearest neighbor analysis.